Help me! Help me! It's got them! It's, it's coming for me now! It's, it's coming for me! My crew! My crew! We, we, were, we were here shooting for my show. I'm a parapsychologist. Hunted LA. Oh, oh, God, it was right behind me. We've got to get out of here. Look, I'll level with you. We, we, we usually fake these things, you know, ghosts, if this, that's all bullshit. We were setting up downstairs, and weird shit started happening. My crew, they all started disappearing. I, I don't know what's happening. No, no, don't go down there. We've got to get out. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was out of nowhere. Real terror is not the sight of death. It is the fear of death. What is the fear of death? Terror of the unknown. Is it these eyes you peer into? No. I am not the unknown. You and I are closer kin than you and it were. Drinking blood to sustain your death, you are damned, yes? What if, besides the blood of the living, you had to eat pounds of their flesh to maintain that thin facade of life? What would you call it? Twice damned? My birth name I tell no one. You may address me as Pisha. Pisha was the name of my companion and lover in a time before my death, 230 years ago. She has no need of it anymore. My stay in this city is transitory. I seek relics of the occult traced here, and would trade similar artifacts to acquire them. But if you wish to bargain with me, the kind upstairs must be sent down here. He has seen too much. Tell him this was all a ruse, his friends playing a joke. He will come. He must come down here. If he leaves, the frail disguise we wear for mortals will be seen through. Eventually.
Greetings, Neonate. Might I assume you received my invitation? I have been looking forward to meeting you for quite some time. Strauss. Maximilian Strauss. I am the regent of this chantry. Welcome. Ah, yes, forgive me. I forget that you are not embraced within the pyramid. We share the same blood, you and I. But there is much you have yet to learn about our clan. Yes, this new life in which you find yourself undoubtedly seems strange. I'm sure you have many questions, young one. I will answer those which I am able. The pyramid is the social structure of our clan, with each level of advancement watched over by the next. There are apprentices here at the Chantry who are my charges, and I have a lord who watches over me and other local regents, and so on. In most cases, Tremere are very selective about who they embrace and how it is done. There are traditions and laws that we adhere to, so the circumstances of your embrace were, let us say, unconventional. Therefore, you are outside the pyramid. Such things are possible, young one, but you would have to prove your worth to the clan before it would even be a consideration. Tremere guard their secrets well. Perhaps it is something we will speak of later. A chantry is a local gathering place for those of the Tremere clan. I live here, as do apprentices from time to time. A regent is the leader of a chantry, as well as a teacher to young Tremere apprentices who are studying the mysteries of our clan. Let me give you some advice, young one. Your survival in kindred society will often depend on your ability to find out yourself what is going on around you. Remember that well. As for what is going on here in downtown, the word on everyone's lips Kindred or kind seems to be epidemic. It seems that disease has been spreading at an alarming rate throughout the downtown population. Considering our particular appetites, the local kindred are more than concerned about these developments. Yes, indeed. My opinion is that the local anarchs are responsible for these outbreaks. Their precipitous indulgence of certain passions often leads to such things. Ergo, their need for the watchful eye of the Camarilla. The Camarilla? It is merely a kindred sect that exists to protect its members from the outside world. There are specific codes of behavior that we abide by in order to ensure the continuance of our species. It is nothing more, and nothing less. Surely, what else would you like to know? No. There are many independent clans who are not aligned with the Camarilla. And the Sabbat is another sect of various vampire clans whose beliefs are very different than our own. Unsavory sorts, to say the least. I understand you have already run afoul of them. Ah, yes, the infamous Mr. Rodriguez. I understand you owe him your life twice now. Had he not intervened, the prince would have surely had that hound of his separate your head from your shoulders. In any case, it's a shame that Rodriguez cannot see the wisdom of the Camarilla. He would make a powerful ally. As it is, he is a significant thorn in LaCroix's side, which serves my purposes just the same. LaCroix is a prince, neonate, and a ventru on top of that. Even if he weren't as young and indiscriminate as he's already proven himself to be, I... But I say too much. Let us just say that he and I have differing ideas on the use of power. Hmm. Well... Without saying too much, I think that Sebastian Lacroix lacks the usual discretion necessary to be a prince. I see in him a lust for power that overshadows his responsibility to the Camarilla. <laughs> no, young one. I aspire not to such lowly heights. My only interests are those of my clan and the Camarilla. 
<laughs> you will do well in this new life, young one. That I can see already. Surely. What else would you like to know? The Anarchs feel that they don't need the structure and discipline of the Camarilla. I feel that they pose a threat, both to those loyal to the Camarilla and to themselves. Most are mere children and need our guidance. Surely, what else would you like to know? Of course. Hmm, an interesting proposition. If you succeed in finding the cause of this epidemic and putting an end to it, I will compensate you appropriately for your efforts. I will ponder the nature of your payment while you are gone. Believe me, I will treat you fairly, Neonate, and your service to the Camarilla won't be forgotten. What is it you would like to know? Surely, what else would you like to know? Of course. Hello, Neonate. How can I be of assistance? Of course. Hmm. An interesting proposition. Very well. Again, I recommend speaking with the Anarchs. You can find most of them at the local watering hole, reveling in the vices of their former lives. I believe the place is called The Last Round. It ain't the talk of the town. Host a child for Camarilla Benevolence. What errand does the prince have you running today for? Nines is expected. Have some manners and don't wear out your welcome. Act up again, and I'll be the one showing your ashes to the door. What's up? You've got to understand, Kendrick. You're carrying a 6,000-year curse in your blood. No matter how powerful it makes you feel, that blood is a tangle of chains that's going to leave you bound in servitude the rest of your existence. Your elders command the blood. They control the blood, and the blood listens. You'll never even hear their call. But the blood will, and it'll make you obey. That shit stretches all the way back to King. Nothing you can do. Some ancient sleeping in a tomb half a world away has a bad dream, and you don't feel that shit. Like it or not. Cain, man. Father of all vampires. He killed his brother Abel and was cursed by God to walk eternity feeding on the blood of his children. Some heavy shit, man. Keep your voice down. Is Cain real? I don't know. Not sure I want him. The point is, with this curse pulling your strings, you really want to sign away your right to fight by joining the Camarilla? But Camarilla just ain't necessary. Their rules is just common sense shit. The masquerade and all that. Sure, it makes sense. Like the Ten Commandments. You know the Ten Commandments, don't you? Yeah, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Sounds good, but you and me both know that shit don't always fly. What if some society like the Camarilla comes along and just up and kills you if you break one damn command? Whatever, man. I choose not to submit. I signed away my rights once, and it landed my ass. 
ass in the Southeast Asian jungle with nothing but an M60 and a shitload of quests on it. Now I'm dead and the real hell starts. I'll be dust before I roll over and take it again. No one bows to Nines Rodriguez. He leads by example, down here with us. Bet in some chicken shit, limp wrist paper pusher hiding up in his tower. It's only Camarilla, she couldn't see the difference. I don't need to bear my fangs to feel good about myself. The masquerade is a fruity Camarilla lady. Other than that, I ain't got a problem with it. Live and let live. We got enough to worry about. You know, speaking of the masquerade, I just thought of something you might be able to help us out with. There's this girl who's been making a lot of noise lately. It's a real pain in the ass. She's a ghoul of this one Toreador creep who disappeared. Her name is Pat. She hangs out in the clubs downtown. She used to show up around here and act like she was everybody's best friend. It was all fun and games until her vampire sugar daddy stopped calling. Now she can't get her blood fixed and shit ain't so fun no more. Man, she's been told he was dead. She don't listen. Just ask again louder. Junkie, she's gonna make a scene and get us all some real heat. Vampire hunters, man. You start doing stupid shit and breaking the masquerade and you'll see what I'm talking about. Trust me. Hunters are the kind of trouble you don't want. She's crossed the line. Only time that mouth ain't blabbing is when it's sucking vampire blood. She's gotta disappear. Do this, and we'll keep it our little secret, you hear? All right, have fun. I'd love to do this one myself, but I know a sire. Just let me know when it's done. Yeah? Yeah, who do you want to know about? That's the man there. What righteous kid. I wish he'd take a more active stance in our fight. Fuck, man, he's Jack. Jack just does his thing. God help anyone who gets in the way. Well, well, look at who made it back in one piece. How's Santa Monica, kiddo? <laughs> I can't imagine you did. Probably too busy getting pushed around by every vampire with a week of seniority over you, am I right? That's usually the way the story goes. Same old bullshit politics from when you were alive, huh? Don't it make you just want to rip somebody's spine out? What? You saying that's just me? <laughs> politics. The stuff that makes the rich get richer keeps the powerful in power. Look at why you're out in Santa Monica in the first place. Cause Prince LaCroix said so. <laughs> Ah, oh, kid, I never answered to no man in life. Now I sure as shit ain't taking orders from a vampire with a suit and a funny name. And when I die again, the devil's gonna have to cut me a deal if he wants my ass. Besides, I never trust anybody with an X in their name. Because he never thought you'd make it back. If Nines didn't stand up for you in the courtroom, you would have been toast right there, man. Everybody knows that. It's bullshit, Camarilla Law. You gotta get it approved before you sire anyone. Vampire population control, fascist crap. LaCroix wanted to look like the strong leader upholding the law. Public relations, man. Calculated risk. Vents who are born in a boardroom. When Nines called him out, LaCroix realized it was time to show a carefully measured dose of Camarilla compassion. Yeah, man, it's called kicking ass and crushing the skulls of any asshole who steps on my toes. That seems to work. People dig it. LaCroix is the boss of the Camarilla in L.A. That's it. <laughs> LaCroix is a <the> boss. <laughs> That's rich. The free living dead, kiddo. A lot of people like to use the label Anarchs. Whatever the hell that means. Anarchs. It does got a nice kick to it, though, huh? <laughs> Yeah. That's us, so I'm told. What'd you want to know? Yeah, I could tell you about the history of the movement about our struggle. What's any of that shit mean, anyway? Do we want to sit through history class here? I'm no scholar, kid, but I've been around. Seen more and done more than most vampires ever will. I don't know that our situation's ever gonna be easy. 
but something's gonna decide what we're fighting for. Fight harder than the other son of a bitch. Every time I yank a jawbone from a skull and ram it in an eye socket, I know I'm building a better future. <laughs> you bet, kid. As much as anyone is. Nines is a stand-up guy. Takes the politics a little too seriously, though. Came up during the Great Depression, so his brain's wired to that shit. Yeah, I'm not sure the story on most of them. Nines crew. Bruja. Most everyone here has Bruja blood. Moving right along. Oh, my favorite topic. Don't think that Camarilla has a monopoly on those ideals, okay, kid? No one is arguing over that shit, and if they tell you that's what this fight is all about, then they're really giving you the full fist. You hear me? The Camarilla protects the people running the Camarilla. That's it, the end. The rest of them are bloody gristle for the machine. Doddering old dust farts. They might be powerful as all hell, but who knows? They're too afraid to stick their heads out of their hidey holes. And why should they? This whole huge system is built so they don't have to. Ah, not one of the bigs, but he ain't out risking his ass in the street, that's for sure. Troy has ambitions of joining that inner circle, delivering Los Angeles in their pocket with a killer on a resume. Not bad, evil. Man, think if a country had the same dictator of this for 500 years, it's also a blood-drinking predator. Think there's gonna be some evil shit come out of that equation? I'm not saying let's go towards the Malkavian living under the abandoned hotel because she happens to be a Camarilla. I'm saying let's change that shit from the top down. Camarilla membership is 95% victims, 5% evil bastards. But make sure and understand, any of those victims point a gun at me, they get drained and slaughtered like sheep. Hey man, you do what you gotta do to survive when you're young, but there comes a time when that excuse don't fly no more. When you should know better or want to do something about it. Being dead is no excuse for walking around with your eyes closed. Ah, beware the protection of wolves. Moving right along. Again, does everything have to be about these dickheads? The savant are worthless, man. Fake tits on a zombie worthless. Fun to watch, though. Like the Three Stooges with chainsaws. Yeah, they oppose the Camarilla, but they suck when it comes to execution. The Sabat are in the same business as the Camarilla. Sabat have a little longer chain, but they're slaves all the same. Sabat chased you in here, Cammy. Heard Nine saved your ass again. You think LaCroix would have stopped counting as many long enough to get your back, Jack? Cammy, you'd have a whole lot less about your neck if it hadn't been for Nines calling the prince out in that courtroom. Shit. Looks like things worked out for LaCroix anyway. Got himself a new errand boy out of it. As long as you're a tool for some cape, you don't have to say a word to start pissing me off. Cape, Cammy. Camarilla elders. The ones that have been around so long they think candlelight's a keen invention? You're doing their dirty work and you don't even know it. Winning? More like festering. What the hell do you know anyway? Just woke up dead and think you already know the score? Please. Let me put it in perspective for you. The Camarilla claims every kindred's part of the organization regardless. You do something they don't like, well, you're Camarilla, so you get punished under their laws. Like it or not. I'm Damsel, grandmother of these mothers, and one pissed bitch since LaCroix ruled in. Oh, don't even joke about bad blood at a time like this. Don't you know we've got a plague bearer around here? A plague bearer's a fool that doesn't care who they feed from. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. We can't get sick, but the kind can. And kindred that feed on men start spreading disease. Enough gets sick, it's an epidemic, CDC's in town as we speak. If someone puts together two and two as to the real cause of an outbreak of bloodborne diseases, guess what happens? 
So the plague bearer's got to be found and put down. If the Camarilla really gives a damn, they'll help us out. Our mess? For all I know, this could be some Camarilla plot. One of our boy's ghouls, name's Paul, lives nearby in the Skyline Apartments. Been a stranger lately. Looked like death last time he was here. Said he didn't get bit, but maybe you can get more info out of him. Wait, if Paul's not talking, you might want to start questioning the homeless pop. So many have been dying lately that it takes the city a few days to pick up the bodies. Yeah? That goddamn blood witch told you what? He thinks we're responsible for that plague bearer? If I hadn't promised nines I'd keep my nose clean, I'd go over right now and rip him a new wizard shoot. Magic missile casting motherfucker! What? Yeah? No one like him in this world or the next. He's to the Anarchs what George Washington was to the colonies, what Ho Chi Minh was to Vietnam. He is the LA Anarchs personified. He's a great leader, and yet, he's humble. I die for him. No one like him in the Camarilla or otherwise. Anything else? Who the hell does he think he is coming into town claiming Camarilla authority over the city? We kicked them out 60 years ago. It's like England coming back and telling the U.S. how they should do things. Fuck LaCroix. Yeah? Jack? Jack's Jack. Kind of a legend amongst Anarchs. There's not an Anarch in the world who wouldn't stand in rock star awe of Jack. Even the Camarilla doesn't mess with him. He's been around a long time. He used to be a pirate, so the rumor goes. Talk to Jack. He's never short on Jack. Yeah? We are about passion, Cammy. And freedom. Things most Camarilla types just can't understand. I could go on and on, but Skelter says it takes too long to get me off my soapbox. Ask him. Or even Jack. I mean, geez! It just makes sense. Power should be redistributed amongst all of us, not just a few. Communism would actually work for Kindred, where it fails with humans. It's just common sense, you know? Yeah? It's a sham! A pyramid scheme. Nothing but musty, withdrawn elders waging power struggles for no other reason than to keep their own ass alive for one more century. You think you have any real power in the can? You're kidding yourself. You'd be better off without them. You'll see. You showed up. Good. Here's what I gotta tell you. And so you know, I don't lecture, I don't rap, I'm no bureaucrat. I'm just a guy out of nowhere came to be involved in something 500 times bigger than you and me. You got a right to know the score. The Camarilla? This is the short of it. They operate a lot like a pyramid scheme. There's a bunch of these old timers at the top with God only knows what plots in mind. They lose their power, they die. They sired more to carry out their plans. And looking for a little power than those kinder decide for their own schemes and so on and on and on. It hurts my head just thinking about the mess. And it works out to as this. Only a few people at the top have any real power. Them's fighting words, newbie. But you're young and stupid, so I won't make an example out of you. See, the Camarilla claims all of us are members, even if we don't want to be. Which is, of course, the biggest little horseshit a man ever heard. I learned the way of this world during the Depression. A bunch of old rich bastards screwed the country. But did they suffer? No. The little people suffered. You can't trust the people at the top. The world would be a better place without them. All you can do is get a group of people together who aren't assholes. Find a place to put your feet up and make some examples of the quote-unquote elite to keep the rest the hell out. Everyone's an equal here. The same thing this country used to be about. That's what L.A. has been. An anarch free state. The Camarilla was kicked out on their ass a long time ago. We, the anarchs, didn't want to play their politics anymore. Now LaCroix and crew pop in like they never left? Uh-uh. No goddamn way. Their laws don't apply to us. I got their meeting right here. LaCroix represents everything I hate. The Camarilla, stuck-up aristocrats, rich businessmen, crooked politicians. The only place LaCroix belongs is in an urn. No such thing. And again, newbie, don't throw those kind of words around lightly. You're risking a beatdown. I fought to keep L.A. free since I was embraced. A long time later, I'm one of the only ones left that hasn't bitted or switched sides. The most veteran soldier on the battlefield. 
Here's what I tell all the new blood. One, you get careless, that blood will make you into a monster. But you rampage around here, you get put down. Two, don't kill when you feed, no reason to. In this city, there's lots of ways to slake the beast without leaving a trail of dead. Three, the Camarilla's full of shit. Four, watch your back, always. And lastly, learn how to fight. Because a speech ain't gonna save your ass when you're staring down the barrel of a shotgun. After picking your ass up off the pavement back there, yeah, I can tell you don't even know the basics. Hold your hands up like this, and keep your body at an angle. It makes you harder to hit. Keep your thumbs out of your fists and put your weight into your punches. LA's the school of hard knocks, so keep your friends close and your enemies in a barbecue pit. Once you square things with LaCroix, don't give that son of a bitch the time of night. I got my eye on you, kid. jabbering about some kind of monster that took him somewhere and got him sick. And that's all I know, okay? And that's all I'm saying. Well, you can usually find him down in his alleyway, just across from that bar over there. Who's there, huh? Old Bill can't see too good these days. Is, is that you, Fred? I ain't got no booze tonight, so you may as well get the hell out of here. Yeah, I might be able to. <coughs> but I'm awful thirsty tonight, mister. Could you spare five bucks for a man who's been down on his luck? <laughs> Thank you much. <coughs> I'm going to have to go pick up some hooch. <laughs> For medicinal purposes, you know. <laughs> now, I know you ain't going to believe old Bill, because I've been telling my friends and the cops and everyone since it happened. And people just say that it's the hooch talking and nothing more. It was a monster, you see monster with his face all twisted and ugly, teeth longer than your finger, and these eyes piss yellow and full of hate. I've never seen eyes like that before, still giving me bad dreams. He grabbed me, threw me over his shoulder, took me to the bad place, the dark place. <coughs> oh, God, the smell, worse than anything, I... and then he bit me, my neck. Oh, God. It was horrible. Don't remember too much after that. Blacked out and woke up here in my alley. <coughs> Haven't been feeling too well since then. <coughs> Came up through the sewers he did. Just around the corner there. <coughs> I don't want to go back to the bad place, friend. <coughs> don't let the monster come back and take me there.
found your way down here, did you? <laughs> Following the smell of entrails <laughs> and rotting flesh. Looking for a free meal, little bloodsucker. There's meat galore in my kingdom. The doors have been opened, the seals broken, and the final steps into the abyss. The terrible mysteries of the ninth circle. Held. <laughs> Brother Canker, they call me. High Lord in the diseased halls of the dead. Look around you. The blood. The bloated bodies. The maggot-ripped mortal shells. These are the signs. The coming of a new age. They are the weak. Sick. Hopeless. I bring them a new purpose. They are the vessels of darkness. Carrying the diseased truth in their veins. <laughs> the Brotherhood of the Ninth Circle. The darkest dawn is almost upon us. Come, join us in these last nights, spreading our disease upon the earth, sharing this unholy communion with our human heart. <sighs> Join the disciples who have gathered here, floating in their own putrescence. I will show you the mysteries of our brotherhood as I feed on your flesh! Player, what's the score? How they hang? Good evening and all that commotion. Welcome to Fat Larry's Trucker Mac, the only store for all your needs after 10 o'clock. I am the proprietor and salesman of the month several years in a row. The ladies call me, oh God! 
fat, but you can call me Fat Larry with a F-A-T. Cause I know I got a weight problem, I just don't give a fuck. Counterfeit? Man, I look like one of those peanut-headed rock-smoking brothers selling S-H-A-C-K shirts they made at their mama's house. I'm the real deal OG man in the alley with what you need. Counterfeit. Man, why you gotta be like that? Nah, nah, that's what I like to hear. But it's like this. I save my best up for select clientele. Now that don't mean I don't appreciate your badness. It's just, you know, badness. Say now, brother, seeing the kind of commando gear you been stocking up on, you ain't just using that stuff for keeping the neighbors away from your shit, is you? Wow, 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 that's your business, okay. I just figured somebody with a shopping list like yours might be up for a little action czar, all right? Yo, I need a hardcore, massively bionic, two-fisted yo Jimbo for a supersized skull. Straight up, hundred million dollar movie gangster. You still with me? Yo, here's what's going down. I got a tip that the Chinatown Tong and some local boys are meet down at a nearby parking garage to carry out a business deal. Now, I can't tell you what they is exchanging, but let's just say a certain client of mine is ready to drop some Uncle Sam size bucks to acquire what's in briefcase number one. You get it for me, I'ma not only give you a cut, but I roll out my special stock as well. Now how that sound? Yo, man, why you gotta shake me down like that? If I hadn't just got my foot out of cast, I'd do it myself, but y'all, it's got to be that way, fine. You got a discount, but only after I get the briefcase. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Now, if you're the straight-out hard-boiled Terminator type, I'd suggest you buy some heavy firepower before you roll up to the parking garage. You need anything? Quiet. I don't like this place. It's nice to see the haunted 
Don't you feel like Celtics here? Like we're being watched? No. Hairs on the back of my neck sticking up. Swim. Like, what's the word? No, no, it's, 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 okay. Don't call Harry and Johnny always nervous. I'm not nervous. Annoying. Dick. So long. No gunshots? No worries. We need to take it out. Easy. That time I went down, man. You ducked behind a car and pissed yourself. That was blood. Oh, yeah, right. You got shot and you didn't tell nobody. That's because it got better. Damn, man. How come I gotta get stuck with you?
They can take that away, away from the blue shade. They don't want to see the money, so we can't let them. Because you knew when you came up. Really? Now why? You want to smack them. Going again. We can take that away. They don't want to see the money. They don't want to see the money. Partner! Outstanding! Pass it over here, partner. Yeah, that's beautiful. Everything looks in order. <laughs> Somebody somewhere got to be pissed off by losing this. <laughs> Too bad I sent my man right here after him. All right. Let me peel off a few bills for you, and I'll give you a discount from now on. I'll just drop this off to the new owner in the morning. Then I'm gonna give me a big old steak. Not that domestic stuff neither. I'm gonna order up 32 ounces of Kobe beef, the expensive shit. You wanna come? My treat. Say, my girl down at Confession, named Venus Dare. She asking around for someone with skills to, well, 
I let her tell you. I give her a call, recommend you if you're interested. Man, what you do with all this stuff, I don't want to know. Just keep that cash flowing. Huh. Thank you, Paul. Everybody comes in here's got to have a short house rules. Inhibition's the first thing to go. Do more of these and you'll be telling me your nastiest, dirtiest stories. I am your beat priestess and it's time to confess. Venus was her name. Got anything you want to confess? Larry? Oh, so you're the Action Jackson he was going to send over? Oh, yeah? I've been waiting for someone like you to come in here. You see, I've got this situation that's gotten a little out of hand, and I need someone to inform some people that they won't be getting paid this month. Intrigued yet? Well, the parking lot next to the Empire Hotel. Couple of guys, Russian accents, bit thick. I need you to tell them Venus doesn't have their money. That's it. That's it. Drinks on the house for a week. You want cash? Whatever, I can do that. Question is, are you worth it? Hmm, I expected you'd bite. Empire Hotel, tell them I'm broke. You can run, right? Never mind. Just don't go starting any street fights, all right? These guys are connected. Anyhow, a lot of people have yet to confess to the beat freezers. Later, darling. <laughs> I knew you'd talk to me. I swear you were all, like, totally drawn to me. I'm surprised I don't know you. I usually meet all the L.A. vampires out on the scene. Not a lot of you out tonight, which is weird, because I don't know of any parties going on. No, come on. It's totally cool. I'm Patty. Seriously, everyone knows me. Besides, I just wanted to ask you if you've seen someone. His name is Kent Allen Ryan. He's a Toreador. Really good looking, dresses really well, like all Prada usually. You are totally awesome. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you that you don't have to dress cool or have a lot of power to be a cool person. <laughs> so, where is Kent? Oh, that is totally Kent. He's so like that. I better go find him. He needs my help to do anything. Thanks again. Fashion bitch send you money. Where is money? No money? Duh. Tell bitch we be back next month.
I can't hear you. Let's talk in my office. Well, you certainly did better than my bouncer did. Poor dear can't turn his neck to the right anymore. <laughs> Already had a call from Boris. Wasn't too happy about tonight, son of a bitch. Say, how would you like to get into the club business, hmm? Well, to start this club, I have to take out a significant loan from a king bastard by the name of Boris, and every time I haven't been able to make the monthly plus interest, the bastard takes what he feels is a suitable late fee. I've got a club to run, so I'll be blunt. I refuse to... Fuck that misogynistic old man one more time to hold on to the club. So I need someone to eliminate him. Do this, and I'll make you a silent partner. Boris is high up in the Russian Mafia. Does that make a difference? He's at the Empire Hotel. Always has a few of the fiercest bully boys standing around trying to outsneer each other. He's got a short temper, and more than likely he's been drinking for the last four hours. Here, key to the penthouse level. Hospital, but in my crew, are they? Are they? Really? A, a joke? <laughs> a joke? A joke? Right? <laughs> oh, real funny. Oh, you got me good. <laughs> I'm going to hurt some people very badly. Mr. Milton, you know who this is, and I do hope you realize that we're still on for tonight. Meet me at the agreed-upon location across from the bar by the underpass. Bring your associate, Mr. Durbin, as it is a two-man job that I am proposing. With any luck, the two of you are already on your way, and I shall see you soon. Goodbye.
what I've got. Ugh, I feel like crap. Actually, I need to ask you a favor. Could you pick me up some cold medicine at the store? <coughs> I hate to bother you, but I can't seem to get out of bed. <coughs> the code on my door is 1203. Hey, listen, I, uh, had a really good time the other night. Maybe we could do it again sometime. Sorry, I'm rambling. Okay, bye. taking all kinds of medicine, but I can't seem to get rid of it. I I feel like I got a fever and a sore throat. <coughs> I'm real weak. Can't seem to get out of bed. What day is it? I, I can't remember. Well, I think I got sick from one of my <coughs> clients. I was feeling fine until I, I, uh, I saw her a few days ago. I'm, uh, I'm in, uh, sales. Yeah. <coughs> You know, door-to-door -door stuff. Nothing very interesting. I do? I, I, I mean, n no, I, I'm not hiding nothing. <coughs> I just... I don't like, uh, talking about my personal business with strangers. Okay, okay. I'm a professional escort. <coughs> yeah, well, it's not exactly what I was hoping for when I moved to L.A. But it pays the bills, I guess. No, not Paul. <coughs> he asked me out a couple of weeks ago, and we had a really good time, you know? He was the first guy in a long time who treated me decently. She was just a woman who called. She, uh, she found my ad in the newspaper. <coughs> Usually only do business with referrals, you know, but she was offered a lot of money. Her name was Jezebel. Jezebel Locke. I'm usually not too good with names, you know, but hers was so strange. <coughs> I can't seem to get it out of my head. Yeah, I mean, I think so. <coughs> to tell you the truth, I don't really remember a whole lot about that night, you know. <coughs> Everything's a little blurry, you know. I mean, I'm not usually, you know, into women. But I remember feeling so attracted to her. I thought she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. <laughs> well, the next thing that's clear <laughs> is when I woke up the next morning. <laughs> I've been feeling too well since then. To tell you the truth, I have other friends who've, who've uh, worked with her, and they're not doing so hot either, you know? <laughs> She had a room at the Empire Hotel. I can't remember the number. <coughs> hey, are you sure that Paul's okay? He's not sick, is he? <coughs> Good. He, he's a nice guy. <coughs> I hope he calls me again sometime. I hope so. I really do.
Yes? May I help you? Yes. Miss Locke is one of our more... um... popular guests. Why do you ask? I can't do that. It's against hotel policy. I see. Well, in that case, perhaps I can make an exception. Here's the key to her suite. Have a nice evening. Believer, little morsel? Have you come for the kind of enlightenment only Jezebel can give? Yes, I am Jezebel, and I have such things to show you, little morsel. Such beautiful, dirty little things. Won't you come into my parlor? Oh, come on now. Don't deny yourself the pleasure of Jezebel's talents. Just a few more steps and we can be enveloped by the sweet darkness, become slaves to the desires of our wasted flesh. Oh, you cannot escape me, little morsel. One way or another, you and I will intertwine our beings on the way into the Ninth Circle, and I will send you forth, full of the sweet sickness I carry. Yes, I follow the path of the Ninth Circle. Come and join the Enlightened, indulging your animal instincts until both kine and kindred lie spent upon the altar. Desire will be our truth. Desire and the death that follows. I cannot control my hunger any longer. Come, the truth will be shown to you as I drink the blood from your twice lifeless body. Oh, it will be ecstasy. Oh, ecstasy, little morsel. Sweet ecstasy.
terrorist-related smuggling. Coast Guard search parties are still patrolling the area where the dangerous for <laughs> Local hospitals started seeing a dramatic increase in the amount of patients with severe respiratory illness, and many doctors say they may be ill-equipped to handle the surging number of new cases. The Center for Disease Control urges people in the downtown area to exercise caution and to seek medical treatment immediately if they exhibit symptoms that include fever, hacking cough, nausea, rashes or sores, painful discharges, or sudden sustained bleeding. A tourist bus destined for the ancient city of Angkor Wat that failed to return Wednesday night was found this morning, though without any trace of... Who's there? Shot was me. What the hell do you think you're doing? Well, spit it out. I do not have all goddamn night. Malin Kayas Folach, stupid, spoiled American child. I give her so much and she spits in my face. So, what, you are her messenger boy? You do work for stupid little girl? You are not man. This is true. Hmm. I tell you what. How can we come to agreement? And maybe get you to do something for me instead? You go back over to stupid club, you find ungrateful little girl there, and you kill her! I pay you, I see she trusts you, for you to do this it will be easy. You will get nothing from me. Go tell that bitch she can pack up Little Club. Her name is coming off it. Get the hell out of here. Pashli, go! Very well, Tovarish. You make your point. That is off. Tell spoiled girl she get nothing from me ever again. <laughs> <sighs>
there you are. Finished yet? What? Yeah, I can't hear you. Let's talk in my office. Boris? That Boris is blood? Guess we're partners then. If you only knew what I had to do over the years to keep this place open. Tell you what, partner. Come in every few days and I'll give you your cut. Here's tonight. I've got some money to make us. I'll hold your share of the profits. Don't forget to drop by and scoop them up once in a while, hmm? My man, what is up? What's up, brother? You enlightened? I see. Welcome to the Brotherhood. The Bishop will see you upstairs. Hey. D did you get summoned? You're going upstairs to see the... Bishop, you're n new to the Brotherhood, huh? Just got enlightened. I, I've been here a few days. <laughs> when the Bishop wants to see you, you'll be summoned, and then you go up these um, these stairs up to the the t temple. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I hear things, but, but I haven't been summoned. I had a friend, snuck up there a few days ago, said she saw things, bad, bad things. Yeah. Blood. She said, um, b -b blood everywhere. She, um, she saw a few of the summoned, t tried to, uh, oh, to talk to them, but they just, just stared at her with these, um, these woo blank looks, you know. No, one of them uh, started reaching for her, and she she ran away. Yeah, yeah. I know. The b -b bishop said we have to shed our um our uh, our earthly fears on our journey to the to the ninth circle. But I'm I'm scared to go upstairs. I. I just, uh, I just, I just want to go home. You know, I want to go home.
Welcome, brother. I see you have been enlightened. Are you searching for something? Do you seek the truth? You've come to the right place, brother. We got more truth here than we can handle. <clears throat> they call me Bishop Vic, Shepherd of the Damned, your midnight guide through our last days here on Earth. Do you feel it, brother? The curtain being drawn back at last, drawn back by my hand, by the Brotherhood of the Ninth Circle. <coughs> Uh, uh, disease. Brother, you've got to open your mind. One man's disease is another man's sanctity. Here among the Brotherhood of the Ninth Circle, we have shed these earthly labels. Come, partake of our divine communion. Gehenna, Judgment Day, the Apocalypse again. Brother, you are too indoctrinated into the antiquated beliefs of this material world. There is no rhyme or reason, no all-powerful and terrible gods who watch over their children. You talk of disease. What about the disease that you and I both carry? Our flesh remade into nothing more than an abomination, feeding on our brothers and sisters like so many cattle. What god watched over me when that demon tore into my neck and made me into this monster you see before you? No, brother. There is no god who would tolerate such a thing. And so I have become God, and the diseases I carry to the masses will bring about an end of my own making. <coughs> Until we have all journeyed below into the Ninth Circle. The time for words has come and gone, my brother. You and I will take those last steps together and see what truth lies behind the curtain. Let the night fall forever on this cursed earth, and let the fruits of my labor bring a long and bloody harvest.
Hello, Neonate. How can I be of assistance? Of course. You have? Impressive, young one. What exactly was the source of the epidemic? Tell me of this so-called bishop. Hmm, I see. That end may very well be upon us. But to business. I have a debt to pay you for your services. If you so desire, I can give to you a unique talisman that might be of use in the future. If that does not interest you, I can compensate you with hard currency. You decide. A wise choice, Neonate. True power lies not in wealth, but in the things it affords you. You have done well. Your status is much raised here at the Chantry. Perhaps you might have a place here with us sometime in the future. Trouble, if you ask me. It's a weakness. Pure and simple. Ugh, can We told him to burn the blood and go to the hospital. Said he thought he'd get over it. Men are stubborn that way. This proves the plague bearers gotta be found. You killed all of them? You. Huh. <laughs> so I guess you want me to thank you or something? Damn it. Thanks, okay? Well, cool for now, but just don't go bragging to everybody about it. You know what I just said about being all right? I take it back. You're as rotten as the rest. Go crawl back into your ivory tower. We'll handle our own shit from now on. Did you see it? He done tore him up, right in two, ripped him apart like a rag doll. These two guys, the dead guy and another, and the, they showed up. I've been living here, so I hid. I thought maybe they was owners or, or cops come to clean the place out. The dead feller called him Muddy. Oh, they was waiting on someone. They were going to do some kind of job, they were saying. But the person they was meeting when he was late. So the one guy leaves to find the phone and call him, and the, and the dead guy stayed. Oh, that's when the killer, yeah, that's when he showed up. One second he wasn't there, and then he was. Like out of the shadows he come up. Scared the shit out of the dead guy. I liked to scream, but I couldn't breathe. Oh, that killer, he grew these claws. I swear it, I saw it. The dead guy went white like he'd seen the devil, and then the killer grabbed him round the neck and lifted him up and started cursing at the guy. Oh, I couldn't hear too good. Something about revenge for what he did or what they did. The killer made sure the dead guy knew who he was and then ripped him open. It just tore him apart. He did it real slow and made the guy scream. Okay, okay, I will. I don't want to never think about that again. <laughs>
The Kind's fate was sealed the moment he entered. Do not waste time debating the morality. If a man walks into a tiger's domain, it may result in his being devoured. So it has. Yes, I am searching for two items I have tracked to this area. One, I believe, may be in one of the local museums. I have not yet searched them all. The other, I believe, to be in the Giovanni's possession though I have not confirmed it. For these items, I will exchange items of similar worth. A fetish is described in a 19th century chronicle of a British platoon's encounter with a local tribe. Soldiers would go missing in the night and be replaced by these fetishes. It may be valuable to my studies. It is used to communicate with certain entities otherworldly. It is a tome called the Voce del Morte. Should you find yourself within the walls of the Giovanni, seize the opportunity and take it, for they will make sure you never have another. <laughs> 